Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And uh, in uh, what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the uh, extraction of the products from the uh, cells which are over expressing your uh, protein. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about how to break these cells with the different uh, methods. So, we have discussed about the physical methods, we have discussed about the chemical method, the enzymatic method and as well as at the end of the previous lecture, we have discussed about the mechanical processes. So, uh, uh, all these processes are actually going to release the uh, content which are being intracellular and uh, then the product or the protein which you are going to over express into these uh, genetically modified organism is released and now the next step is to purify these uh, proteins from the complex mixtures. So, once the product is released from the cells which are over expressing the protein, uh, you have different types of protein. So, you, so pro, most pro, predominant protein could be the protein which you would like to purify, but the protein of other proteins such as the protein from the host will also be released in this process and those proteins will going to be uh, make the task very, very difficult and in that process uh, you have to ensure that you will get the your desired protein, but at the end the same time you will going to remove the other proteins. So, your protein which you are would like to purify is called as the desired protein, the protein which are been uh, uh, given from the host are called as the impurities or the contaminating proteins. So, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about how to purify or how to isolate uh, the protein of your interest. So, this process is being uh, extensively being done simply by employing the chromatography techniques, but before getting into the details of chromatography, we are going to discuss about the basic principle of separation. Let us assume that for explaining you the basic principle of separation, we have taken an example of three molecules and we have taken a very simple molecule of the organic molecules. So, the molecule number 1 is known as the benzene, the molecule number 2 is the phenol and molecule number 3 is the alanine and imagine that you have a mixture of these three bioorganic molecules. First thing what you have to do is, if you would like to separate these molecules, you have to understand the characteristic of these molecules. Let us see what are the characteristics are present in these molecules. So, the molecular formula of benzene is C6H6, the molecular formula of phenol is C6X6O and the molecular formula of aniline is C6H5NH2. The mass or the molecular weight of these three molecules are 78, 94 and 93. Similarly, the density of the benzene is 0.87 grams per centimeter cube, uh, phenol 1.07 and the aniline is 1.02. The melting point, melting point is 5.5 degrees Celsius, whereas in the case of phenol it is 40.5 and uh, for aniline it is the minus 6.3. And the boiling point is 80.1, 181.7 and 184.13. So, what you can see is all these three molecules are varying in terms of the many of the physical properties as well as the chemical properties. And 
this is actually the basis of how to separate the molecules. So, we do, if you would like to separate the molecules, what you are supposed to do is you have to know their physical properties, chemical properties as well as the biological properties as long as we are talking about the protein as well. So, there uh, we have taken an example of three molecules that is benzene, phenol and aniline and they are look like very similar to each other, but they have the distinct physical and chemical properties which could be used as a criteria to separate them. The physical and the chemical properties which can be used to separate the molecules are molecular weight. So, if the molecule proteins are uh, if the molecules are of different molecular weight, you can uh, employ or you can exploit that criteria to purify that. I would like to have a molecular weight, I have I would like to purify a mo molecule which is of molecular weight of 40 and that actually is going to exclude all the molecules which are above to that or lower to that. So, that kind of criteria also can be used. Similarly, you can use the boiling point in case a boiling point can be used only if you are would like to purify the two molecules which are liquid in nature. Similarly, we have the freezing point, crystallization solubility. So, the crystallization is one of the uh, criteria or the physical property which people were using very often to purify. So, what you can do is suppose you have a complex mixture, what you can do is you can let the you can bring the conditions which is uh, of the crystallization conditions of the one molecule. So, what will happen is if you take the liquid which is actually a mixture of the different compounds and then you if you bring the crystallization condition of one of the compound that one compound is going to be crystallized and that crystallized product you can purify simply by filtration and the rest molecule will get filtered out. And then you can wash this uh, crystallized product and uh, you can uh, you recrystallize again and that actually will give you the very very high purity uh, compounds. This is exactly what people do when they, they are producing some of the uh, very very high quality uh, uh, chemical compounds. One of the classical example is sugar itself. So, what sugar what people are doing is they are getting the sugar cane uh, juice and what they are simply doing is they are just bringing the crystallization conditions of the sugar and that is how they are actually making the sugar from the sugar cane uh, solution or sugar cane juice actually. Similarly, you can do a crystallization of the different organic compounds because all the organic compounds are having the different crystallization conditions. So, you if you vary those conditions, you could be able to crystallize your uh, uh, compound of your interest and that is how you can actually get that compound uh, from the uh, mixture. Similarly, you can use the solubility. Solubility and crystallizations are very, very similar properties. Uh, the molecule which is going to crystallize in a particular condition is also going to have the different solubility. So, you can also use the solubility as a criteria. For example, if some molecule is more soluble in water, but less soluble in benzene, you can just simply dump that particular complex mixture into the water. And as a result, what will happen is all other molecule are going to be uh, not soluble. So, they will make the different layer whereas your compound will get fractionated and it will get go into the aqueous layer and that is how you can actually be able to purify. If you remember when we were doing the plasmid isolation that time we were doing the uh, the phenol chloroform treatment and in that phenol chloroform treatment the the you were getting the two layer one is aqueous layer another one was the phenol layer and the in the and, and the DNA which is actually the uh, polar molecules it was migrating to the aqueous layer whereas the protein and all other molecules they were being uh, going into the phenol uh, layer and that is how you are actually separating the DNA from the uh, protein as well as the other contaminating molecules. So, that can be uh, used as a criteria to purify the molecule as well. Then you can use the density, uh, you can use uh, density also. Then sometime uh, when the physical properties are not good enough, people are also using the chemical properties. For example, the functional group, if you see all these three molecules, benzene does not contain any functional group, whereas the phenol contains a functional group of OH and aniline contains the functional group of NH2. So, once you have the functional groups, actually you can exploit 
the functional groups uh, because these functional group could have a differential reactivity and that differential reactivity could bring the some kind of alteration in terms of its physical properties. For example, if you if you make a complex of make, uh, some compound that actually will reduce its solubility, then what will happen is that particular compound is going to be precipitated if you add that uh, reagent and the other two molecules are going to be remain in the solution and that is how you can be able to purify remaining compounds. Uh, and at the end we also can exploit the biological properties. So, the biological properties are mostly been associated with either the DNA or the protein which are biological in nature the molecules and that we will discuss anyway in detail in the subsequent lectures. So, let us see a, a clear example how you can do a separation. For example, if you have a mixture of benzene and aniline, so you have complete mixture of benzene and aniline and you are using the boiling point as a criteria. So, if you remember the, the benzene and aniline are having the different boiling point. So, what we have done is we have started uh, putting it into a condensation reactions or condensation operators and we started heating up this uh, liquid. And as soon as we start heating up, the both the benzene as well as the aniline is going to uh, form the vapor phase. So, the benzene is going to be uh, fractionated into the two phases, one is called as the vapor phase, the other one is called as the liquid phase. So, the both molecules, the benzene as well as the aniline is going to uh, distribute themselves into the two phases, one is called as the vapor phase and other one is called as the liquid phase. So, in the beginning the both molecule are going to uh, uh, distribute themselves into the two phases, but as the process will continue because the benzene is going to have the uh, a different uh, boiling point, the benzene will prefer to be more into the vapor phase whereas the aniline is going to be prefer more into the aqueous phase. So, as a result what will happen is that the benzene will prefer to be into the vapor phase and it will come into the condenser and then within the condenser it is going to be condensed and then you can collect the benzene into the separate uh, flask. Whereas, the aniline the mostly the aniline is going to be remain into the liquid phase uh, as long as you are keeping the uh, temperature up to the boiling point of benzene and at that point when you are bringing it to the boiling point of benzene the more and more amount of benzene is going to be collected into the other flask. So, if you continue this process in the beginning there will be a mixture of benzene and aniline in the top flask as well, but if you continue this process the amount of aniline is going to be reduced in the subsequent uh, distillations and at the end what you are going to have is the pure benzene into the uh, top flask and the pure aniline into the lower flask. And this phenomena of distributing the molecule into the two phases is actually the basic principle of separation and the parameter which actually measures the distribution of the two molecules or distribution of molecules into the different phases is called as the distribution coefficient. So, the formula for distribution coefficient is that the K d is equivalent to the concentration of the molecule in phase A versus the molecule in of the concentration in phase B. So, in this particular case you are going to have 2 K d molecule, 2 K d values one for benzene and the other one is for the aniline. So, aniline is going to have the separate uh, KD values and, and, and the benzene is going to be the separate KD values and because of that the KD values for benzene would be more towards the vapor phase whereas, the KD values for aniline would be more towards the liquid phase and as a result the benzene will go and get distilled into separate flask whereas, the aniline will get into remain into the original flask. So, this is actually the basic principle of separation, but as long as the protein is concerned you cannot use the boiling point or melting point and all any, any such criteria to separate the proteins because the proteins are uh, very very uh, delicate molecules or 
they are gentle molecules they are actually having a defined predefined uh, three dimensional structures so the benzene the protein has to be a protein or the pro, uh, molecules of biological in nature which actually requires some kind of activity and three dimensional structures and all those kind of parameters those molecule has to be purified in a more sophisticated uh, techniques and those technique is known as the chromatography so in a chromatography uh, the purpose of the chromatography is to separate a complex mixture into the individual component exploiting the partition effects which distributes the molecule into the different phases so the basic principle of separation remains the same except that the process or the way in which you distribute the molecule into the two phases are different as uh, in in chromatography compared to the boiling point or melting point and all other kind of those harsh uh, harsh processes the distribution of a molecule between the two phases a and b is given by a distribution coefficient kd if you remember in a previous slide the kd is the concentration of the uh, uh, the molecule in phase a divided by concentration of the molecule in phase b but in uh, compared to that in most of the chromatography technique the phase a is considered to be a stationary phase or the matrix whereas the phase b is the mobile phase or the buffer which you use for the purification now let's uh, understand how the distribution or the separation techniques works in the case of chromatography techniques or chromatography procedures so in most of the chromatography procedures or the column chromatography procedures you are actually filling a column with a bead or some matrix so matrix are nothing but the uh, beads for example these beads could be of silica beads or it could be of agarose beads or it could be some cellulose beads so you can imagine that some circular uh, beads like uh, uh, are being filled and that actually is making a column of a chromatography uh, technique now these beads are actually been arranged in in this fashion and as a result the beads are actually making a layer after the layer so these beads are sitting on to each other and as a result they are actually making a multiple layers and what happen is that once the molecule x or y is interacting with these beads they are actually experiencing the distribution so as soon as the x or the y or z or a b c any molecule when it is interacting with these beads because the beads are not alone they are also having the water so the x which is actually as soon as x, x will interact with the first layer of beads uh, it is actually going to distribute themselves between the aqueous phase and the bead phase but so depending on their distribution the they will distribute themselves towards the bead phase versus the aqueous phase and that actually will continue from the first layer so you can imagine that the beads are having the first layer then this is the second layer third layer fourth layer so you have one layer second layer third layer fourth layer like that and when you flow the water from the top the molecule which are present into the into the layer number 1 are again going to distribute with the with the beads which are present on the layer number 2 that's why and that will continue until the distribution will going to make the separation between the two molecules and that actually is going to make uh, wider separation between the two molecule because the molecules are going to experience not only one distribution or one kd values they are going to experience multiple kd values depending on how many layers of these beads are been packed in that particular column and as a result that's why if you have hundreds of molecules these hundreds of molecules are going to experience uh, hundreds of kd values or hundreds of distributions and as a result you will see that a molecule a is being separated from the molecule b let's see how this is been done in the real value or real real way now imagine that you have a column okay Uh, where you have filled the stationary phase is filled into a cylindrical tube made up of glass or steel the matrix of 
uh, mixture of analyte is loaded onto the top and it runs from top to bottom. Now let us see how the KD is exploited in a column chromatography. Assume two molecules X and Y with a KD value of 1 and 9 is being loaded onto this. So, you have two molecules the which, which are having a KD value of 1 and 9 against this particular column. Okay. Uh, now, if they are traveling through this column as so what is mean by 1 and 9 is that if they are traveling in this uh, column in the and uh, suppose you make the different layers of these beads and I assume that every bead or every bead volume is 1 ml actually. So, what will happen is that suppose you loaded 5 mg of the x and 5 mg of y. Okay. And you can see that x is having a lower KD values whereas the y is having the higher KD values which means that the x is preferring to be remain with the aqueous phase whereas y is preferring or y is distributing themselves to the matrix phase. So, as soon as they will interact with the first layer of matrix and you have flown 1 ml of buffer what will happen is that they will distribute this 5 milligrams which is of x and y according to their distribution plane according to the distribution coefficient. So, what will happen is that x what is the distribution 1 right. So, x is going to distribute between 50 50 1 is means the KD value of 1 means that the concentration of material in the matrix versus the concentration of material into the aqueous phase is going to be equal at any any distributions. This means in the first layer you are going to have 2.5 mg of x and the 2.5 mg of x will go into the aqueous phase. Similarly, for y it is actually be distributed in terms of 4.5 versus 0.5 because the 20 value is 9. This means the y the 4.5 milligrams of y will be bound to the first layer of your beads or the first layer of the beads whereas the 2.5 milligrams of x is going to bind to that particular bead. Now, if you flow one more ml what will happen is that the 1.25 milligrams of x is going to be transferred to the layer number 2 that is for the from the x and the 1.25 from the aqueous will is going to be transferred into the first layer. So, because of that if you see that the x is actually uh, preferentially going towards the aqueous phase which means more and more x is going into the aqueous phase and you know that aqueous phase is running faster than the matrix because matrix is stationary. So, the y will remain there and uh, the, so uh, if you if you start in the beginning the x and y will remain on to the top but once you run this column for longer period of time the y will will go and bind to the beads and that's how they will be uh, they will be going to be remain on top of the column whereas the x proteins or x uh, molecules are going to travel faster with the aqueous phase and that's how the first your x will come out and the subsequently the y will come out and that is why the KD values are actually distributing the molecule between the two phases and that is how they are actually controlling the overall separation. Now, if you see how and monitor this particular type of uh, elution of these molecule from the column you will get a pattern which is called as the chromatogram. So, what is the chromatogram? The plat of elution volume along with the absorbance or you can use any parameter is known as the chromatogram which is given in this particular figure. The volume or time it takes for an analyte to come out from the column is known as the retention volume or the retention time. The chromatogram 
may have separate peaks for example in this case the peak a and peak b are the two separate peaks which are not having the overlapping base whereas you can have the peaks which are having the overlapping base which is actually the c and d so what you see is the c is actually if the d is not present the c is eluting in this way whereas the d is eluting in this way that's why since they are actually sharing the base that's why these two peaks are not being separated so the column is uh, been able to separate a and b whereas the column could not be able to separate c and d so what actually determine or what actually can be used as a criteria to see whether my column is good or bad so the ability of a column to separate the two molecule is known as the resolution and the resolution is depending on two parameter one is called as the distances between the two peaks which means the peak between a and b and so it is actually dependent on the delta t which means actually the distances between the two peak whereas the resolution is also dependent on the average width of the two peaks which are neighboring peaks so the ability of what is resolution the ability of a chromatographic column to analyte or separate two analyte peak from another is known as the resolution it is defined as the ratio of differences in the retention time between the two peak and average of the base of the peak which means the resolution is directly proportional to delta tr versus wav if you have a resolution value of 1 you could be able to see 97% separation of two peaks but if you have a resolution value or resolution value of 1.5 that is considered good because that is going to give you the uh, two separate peaks or that will give you the separation of more than 99% the number of distribution so the, uh, what actually is governing the uh, resolution the resolution is being governed completely by the number of distribution planes because if you have the number of distributions it is going to uh, having the higher chances of separating the two molecules into the two separate peaks that's why the number of distribution events govern the ability of a column to separate the two analytes in another words the resolution is directly proportional to the number of distribution event in column chromatography each thin plane of column matrix participate in distribution of a molecule now you can assume that the uh, if you have a bead and its diameter is d this means the individual planes which are going to make the distribution is actually of the d height so if you have a column of h height you can actually be able to calculate the theoretically how many number of distribution planes are present so you can imagine that if you if the height of a distribution plane is h which means the diameter of these beads and the length of a column is l the number of distribution plane in a column is given by the n equal to l by h and if you solve this you can get the n equal to 16 tr by w whole square or n is equal to 5.54 tr by w half whole square which means that n is going to control the resolution and how you could be able to how uh, the n is controlling the resolution the n is controlling the resolution in two ways it, it is controlling the two parameter as the number of distribution plane will go up it will allow the analyte travel for longer period of time consequently it will going to increase the distances between the two peak which means it is actually going to increase the delta t between the two peaks if you increase the delta t between the two peak you are actually going to increase the resolution because resolution is directly proportional to the delta t now as the number of distribution plane will go up it will going to reduce the width of the base of a peak as a result the peak will become more sharp which means it is actually going lower down the 
uh, w, uh, w of, of a peak which means it is going to make the peak width lower which means eventually it is going to lower down the P W A V between the two peaks which means it is going to increase the resolution because if you reduce this you are going to increase this because the resolution is inversely proportional to T 1 by A W. Now you can see how the number of distribution plane is affecting the uh, the peak width okay so now you can see in this figure when you have the number of distribution plane to 10 you are not going to get a peak in fact you are going to get a flat peak or flat uh, plateau actually if you increase the number to n equal to 100 you are going to see a peak which is very very having the very width uh, very uh, big uh, base, but if you increase the n to the 1000, you will see a decent peak with a narrow base, which means if you increase the n, you are actually going to reduce the base of the width and as a result, the peaks are going to be sharper and sharper. As the number is increasing, the peak width is decreasing, hence the number of distribution in an indirect way to measure the column efficiency, higher the number is desirable for the better separation. So, this is all about the separation of the two molecules under the column chromatography. So, with this we would like to conclude our lecture here. Thank you.